Find out how to raise your self-esteem God's way. Hello, thank you for joining me on Theme Talk. I am Kaya Kemp, and I'm really glad to have this opportunity to talk with you, ladies, women, females, about the topic of how to raise your self-esteem God's way. Well, we all kind of have been through many different things in our life, and of course, there's always that temptation to want to feel insecure about this or that, um, something people said to you um, something that you know the way that people made you feel it could be employers family friends it could be a lot of different things and when you're living in today's society you know even if you're old school there's always been this culture within the world where you're anticipated to buckle down to the dictates of what the world is telling you to do wearing clothing that the world is telling you to wear saying, speaking, and being what the world wants you to be. That's also and always has been a temptation. Okay. And it can cause self-esteem issues because you, you know, you're still trying to find out who you are, what your, what your reason for being is and the upbringing, you know, the household you were brought in. It's a lot of different things that press from the outside and pressures are pressing in and that can cause insecurities. Really us understanding our purpose who we are is the beginning. So before we go any further, I'd like to start with prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you in the mighty name of Yahushua HaMosiach, Jesus the Christ. I thank you, Lord, that you give us identity and that because of you, we move and breathe and have our being. Lord, I thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I yield to you that you may speak a word through me and that you will have your way on this broadcast in Jesus' name. Well, there was a few words spoken to me in the spirit by the Lord. And when he spoke it to me, I had to really ponder the meaning and really seek him for a deeper understanding of what it meant. The three words that I heard was magnitude, fortitude, and centertude. Let me say that again. Magnitude, fortitude, and centertude. I just want to go into a little bit of definition for background. Magnitude. Okay, magnitude means the great size or an extent of something, large size or great importance. Okay, the magnitude of the task would have discouraged an ordinary man. That's an example sentence of how to form the word magnitude and what it might entail. All right, magnitude is also a measure of the brightness of a star as it appears from Earth. Interesting. All right, in physics, Magnitude is defined as the maximum extent or size in the direction of an object. Magnitude is used as a common factor in vector and scalar quantities. Okay. Magnitude. And I really pondered this to understand what magnitude is. The first thing we need to do when it comes to magnitude is to exalt the Lord. Exalt the Lord. He is beyond, beyond, okay? When we magnify the Lord, He exalts us. When we magnify the Lord and look at the magnitude of who He is, He actually lifts us up and exalts us. Now, we're talking about how to raise self-esteem, how to walk in raised self-esteem. And it's not that we're necessarily esteeming ourselves above others. It's not That's not the purpose for what we're supposed to do as women of God. We are supposed to exalt and magnify the Lord because actually he will exalt us in return. And when he exalts us, he's lifting us up, bringing us up in our concept, in our mind, in our thoughts, in our emotions. He's literally raising us up in his identity, in his grandeur, because we are magnifying him because his magnitude 
is how we're able to come into the greater ourselves. Okay. And I want to just go in and talk about and start from reading from the book of Luke. This is coming out of the first chapter, verse 45 through 47. And we may read a little bit beyond that, but let's start there. Luke uh, chapter 1, verse 45 starts and says, And blessed is she that believed. For there shall be a performance of these things which were told her from the Lord. Okay. And Mary said, My soul doeth magnify the Lord. And my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowest estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Okay. For he that is mighty have done to me great things, and holy is his name. Verse 50 says, And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He have showed strength with his arm. All right. He have scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He have put down the mighty men from their seats and exalted them of low degree. When you magnify the Lord, he will exalt you. And when he exalts you, he elevates you. He raises you. He allows you to come in a confidence because of him and his name. And that is the way that he has set things in order. We are not to exalt ourselves. We are not to esteem ourselves above others. We are to actually magnify the Lord because his magnitude is is, is his grandeur, his glory is magnified. And this is all entailed to the Father in heaven, Yahweh. Yahweh is the Father of life, and he's the Father of spirits. We come to Yahweh through the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Messiah. He is the Savior. He is the King of glory. When we come through the King of glory, through the blood of the Lamb that makes it possible for us, we're actually magnifying the Creator of heaven and earth. It all rolls up to the to the to the creator of all things. Okay? That's essentially we magnify the Lord because it's him who has been picked by God to come and to help relieve us and to really to be the perpetition of our sins and to be the one that saved us, essentially allowing us to come out of the bondage, to come out of the damnation, to allow us to come out of death. We come through the Lord Jesus Christ and we're actually magnifying God himself, Yahweh, through the Lord Jesus Christ. When we magnify the Lord, we're magnifying God the Father. Okay, I want to say that. So, it's important that we focus on the magnitude of God, not only outwardly, but inwardly. Now, when you think about the magnitude of God, understand that God is big. He can't be put in a box. Think about what he's created. Focus on who he is. Focus on his name. Focus on his mercy, his grace. And, you know, if you think about God and meditate on God, it, it, it's very clear that you will begin to magnify him because it's all inspiring to understand that he created all living things, that he understands and can hear all thoughts. He knows all things. He's omnipotent. And he's omnipresent. And the more you think about God, the more it's all, all inspiring. All that you see around you was created by him. He spoke things into existence in the very beginning. He is. He wasn't created. He is the creator. We were created. He is. And because he is, and because he reigns, and because he loves us, he helps us come into a greater mindset so that we don't have any low self-esteem. That there is no low self-esteem in, in when you have the confidence and the greater one abiding in you. And this really starts with a relationship with God. It's so key. You really, in order to excel in things of the spirit, you have to have a core and a confidant and the witness of his spirit within you. He abides in you. That is the order of God. And he always will confirm what he is wanting us to do and how he wants us to come into the greater, the knowledge and the understanding. And it comes with elevating of thought. We have to elevate our thought. We have to understand that around us is really almost like a simulation of a whole lot of programming and honestly everything that's going on around you is essentially trying to program you and to get your um, in order to get your allegiance in order to get your worship 
There's a lot of things going on around you for your attention. And so the Lord, he wants us to come through the true and living way. He is that true and living way. Think of the magnitude of his love for you. Think about the, the magnitude of his inheritance for you. We're talking about Heavenly Father Yahweh. He has an inheritance for all of his children. And when it comes to the women of God, even when I read the scripture that dealt with Mary, Mary was handpicked to be the mother of the Savior of the world. That was one of the greatest offices of a woman of all time. So when she prayed and she spoke those words, she was essentially saying the greatness was given unto her and how great he is in order to choose her. This is key. Again, when you magnify the Lord and when you focus on the magnitude of Yahweh, he will exalt you. And when you are exalted by the Lord, there is no low self-esteem because you have an identity of who you are in him. That is very key. Fortitude. So we covered magnitude and now we're going to cover fortitude. Fortitude is strength of mind. When you think of fortitude, it's like a fortress. Fortitude is strong. Strength, okay? The term fortitude comes from the Latin fortitudo or fortis, okay? The Latin word refers to strength. Some synonyms of the word fortitude are boldness. Well, when you hear the word boldness, I'm sure you've heard, you know, that the line of the tribe of Judah is bold. And he has called us into the boldness of the confidence of his spirit and of knowing him through the relationship of his son, the Lord Jesus, knowing the Father Yahweh. Okay, so boldness is a synonym as well as staying power. All right, strength of mind that enables a person to encounter danger or bear pain or adversity with courage. This is key. Calmly and patiently, firm courage is key. Okay. The definition of fortitude is having strong will in the face of danger or pain. All right. For example, an athlete who continues a race in spite of an injury is an example of fortitude. You know, just pausing right there. We all go through adversity. Matter of fact, it's, it's, it's actually in the word. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord promised to deliver us from them all. Okay. When you have those types of weaknesses and when you have certain things happening and when I say weaknesses I'm saying things that we go through that could be thorns in the flesh it could be an ailment um, it could be a you know a disability it could be um, anything that's a suffering type of position understand that in that God will perfect you and God will deliver you that is the key no matter what we go through or no matter what we dealt with number one don't expect for that to be your lifelong um, thorn. Understand that it's for a time, it's for a season, and it's actually for you to be fortitude and focus in knowing. Because if everything was always perfect for every single person, there is the temptation that you won't actually rely on God or you won't actually um, submit to God because you, you may feel as though you need nothing. Now, we always have to humble ourselves because we are in a fallen world. The world doesn't have to be fallen, but there is a fallen state of the world because people have not all sought salvation through Jesus. So there is those who choose to go those paths. But the thing is this, we understand that no matter what we go through, that we have a king of kings that we, that we come to and we come through and that Heavenly Father loves us with an abundant love. Knowing and having that focus of understanding that I might be going through a trial. I'm coming out through this trial. I'm actually coming out. You speak those things that be not as though they are. And as you speak those and as your faith aligns with that, you actually come out because you are being made. You are being built. You are becoming stronger and stronger and more proficient in the things of God and in the miracles of God. You're walking in those things. And those testaments that you have endured, those things that you have experience are for your for your making you know the Lord Jesus Christ said it becomes us to fulfill all righteousness and so the trials and things that we go through we are to go through we're not to rest in but to go through and I just want to explain how important fortitude is and when it comes to women 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 of God fortitude is is another way of saying put on strength mentally you know the woman 
was the weaker vessel. God made Adam first, and the woman was the weaker vessel. But being weaker in the natural doesn't mean you're weaker in every in every in every aspect. Put on strength. The way we get dressed every day, the way we put on clothes for work, or you might um, have an event to go to, it's easy to put on the things that are just coordinated perfectly, or you know, causes you to bring out your best features. There are spiritual applications to things we wear as well. You know, I'm sure that if you've if you've been in the Word of God and if you enjoy the Word of God, I'm sure you're aware of scriptures that talk about you know putting on the full armor of God and then having the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, the shield of faith. Well, this is an instance where we're talking about fortitude. This is the second word the Lord gave me, and the fortitude, as I have explained, means strength. Put it on, wear it. Okay, put on strength, and let's refer to Isaiah. 52 verse 1 and it reads and I'm reading from the KJV it reads awake awake put on thy strength O Zion put on thy beautiful garments O Jerusalem the holy city for henceforth there shall no more come unto thee the uncircumcised and the unclean wow we're going to come back to that and we're going to keep reading we're going to come back to that in just a second Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down. Wow. O Jerusalem, loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. O captive, daughter of Zion. Wow. Wow. Okay. Again, this is coming out of Isaiah chapter 52, verse 1 and 2. And it's pretty clear. He spoke to us and said, Awake, awake. Arise. Arise. Time to get up. Arise. Okay. Put on thy strength, which means that when you wake up, you need to put on your the proper spiritual clothing. Put on the strength. He is giving us the strength to put on. He's giving us the garments to wear. And he addresses us as O Zion. Okay. Put on thy beautiful garments is key. O Jerusalem, holy city, holy, holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come unto thee the uncircumcised and unclean. You know, this is really speaking something. Even when we talk about being single, a person being single, a woman is single. This right here could be uh, applicable in so many different ways. And you can definitely understand that once you put on the beautiful garment of strength that God is giving you, that Yahweh is literally giving you to wear a precious garment. Okay, a beautiful garment because you are beautiful. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. When you put on the strength, you won't allow any uncircumcised fella, man, um, anything that is um, unclean to come unto you, into you, whatever, however you want to take it. It literally says, from henceforth, there shall no more come unto thee the uncircumcised and the, and the unclean. Because you're wearing the strength. You have that vesture. You're not weak. You're not simple minded. You have the vesta. You're wearing the strength. This is powerful. And it is something that you can speak daily. Speak this because he's giving you. He's the one that causes us to quicken us. He quickens us and wakes us up anyway. So when we wake up every day, wake up and put on the garment of strength. Put on the full armor of God. Understand that it has been given to you by the Lord. Amen. I want to go into center to. Now, this is key. Center to. Center to. This is the word the Lord gave me, the, th the third word out of the three. Center to, um, another way to see it is spirit abode. Center to. Think of a chair. When you sit in a chair, you sit in the center of the chair. You don't sit on the arm, you know, unless you got a couch. And even then, when you have a chair, think of a single chair. It might be better. You're sitting in the center of the chair. You have a right and left arm most cases, right? Okay, the point from which, and what it means is center to, it means the point from which an activity or process is directed or on which it is focused. An example would be, he sat in the center to of his chair. Now I'm going to read from John chapter 7 verse 38. Okay, John says, He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Okay, but this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. We're reading out of John 7, and this is before Jesus laid his life down. 
and died for our sins. This is before that happened. And John was essentially saying that out of the belly shall flow. Now, since then, Jesus laid his life down. Obviously, he laid his life down and the promise of the Holy Spirit has come. Out of the belly shall flow living waters. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive him into you. Into you. Inside you. That's why the word says, greater is he that's in you than him that's in this world. He has moved into us. We are the vessels. We are the church. We're, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And he abides in us. And it's telling you through John 7, 38, that out of your belly, which is the center of you, it's the center of your being, shall flow rivers of living water. Well, how is that possible? Through the Holy Spirit who shall come and has been and has and has come already. He has come. This is based on the account in the book of Acts. The Holy Spirit came. He came. Okay, you can receive the Holy Spirit and he will live within you. If you already have the Holy Spirit, then you have the greater one inside of you. I want to lastly say, know who you are. Know who you are and whose you are. And within that knowing, as you think about the magnitude, as we talked earlier, the magnitude of and the grandeur of Yahweh, the magnitude and the glorification of his son. When you think about the magnitude of God all around you and the magnitude of his spirit within you, the deposit of the Holy Spirit, knowing and consciously being aware of his presence around you and within you simultaneously will automatically boost your esteem. Automatically, because you'll have a conscious knowing that goes beyond head knowledge. You have a conscious sense of the abiding of the Holy Spirit within you and the presence of the Lord all around you because Heavenly Father is magnified and glorified. He is magnified and glorified. All right. Get acquainted with God's stock. You make up God's stock because you are the flock of God. You make up his kingdom because you are from him. You were created in the image of God, in his likeness. And so you make up his flock. And when you know that you are from him and that he created you and that he's with you, there's more working for you than against you. There's no need to have any low self-esteem. A lot of the things that we go through in the world and through the realm of this earth is really due because of the projections of things around us that have nothing to do with righteousness. It's a conformity. The enemy wants you to conform to the image of this world, to the image of the beast, to the image and the styles and the fashions that are you see all around you. Those are all actually vain. They're vain. They're vain imaginations. They, they won't actually give you eternal life. They won't actually give you um, a seat in Christ. They're just passing by. They're just a fad. They come and they go. Even as we age and we get older, what we look like when we were 20, you can hold on to it as much as you can. And you can do the proper things to eat right. And all that stuff is great. But it, 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 it moves on. Aging and aging happens. It's a natural process. You can slow it up. But it's still a natural process. So understand all of these things, they come and go. But the one thing that is solid, the one thing that is sure, and the one person that will always be on the throne of heaven and earth is Yahweh. And the Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we come through, and by the blood, the torn veil, is how we're able to abide in him. That's a confident position that allows you to not feel insecure. It allows you to be strong and to, to know that you're esteemed in him because you esteem him. He esteems you. He literally will exalt you because you have glorified him. And that is the key. I hope that this has been a blessing to you. I hope that this has been, you know, something to really give you deep thought on how to not walk in low self-esteem, how to not walk in insecurities. Remember, the three keys is magnitude, fortitude, and centritude. If this has been a blessing to you, we pray that you will like, share, and subscribe. This is a new series called Fiend Talk. There will be several topics covered in this series, but we do have a radio show that we air, and then we have a breath, we have a just a broad, broad knowledge base to help you build yourself up in the spirit by the Lord um, on our website, pillarsandstrategies.net. If you are married, you have a husband, you have a brother, you have a son. We have Men Talk, which really goes deep into the heart of man uh, from, um, from my husband. He's actually ministering that 
segment. You want to check that out. Pass that. Send it to your cousins. Send it to your dads. And send it to any all the men you know. You can even send it to people at work um, who really want to have an identity on in you know as Adam, as a man. That I encourage you to check that out. That is a new series that we rolled out in 2023. And God bless you. And we do appreciate you watching. Thank you. Thank you.